Good morning. Welcome, and it's a pleasure to have all of you here. Um, it's funny to see people in the pews, actually, after several weeks like this. So uh, I'm glad to have you here. I know that it's not ideal circumstances, and I appreciate uh, the fact that you have been willing to uh, abide with some of the, I guess, some of the procedures that we have to do in order to be here. Uh, do I like it? No. Um, do I hope that we can end this soon? Sooner rather than later, yes. Come, Lord Jesus, come quickly. Um, but in the meantime, uh, as I have shared and probably didn't do a, a good enough job even during the video, we've had to sort of set the bar at the very lowest common denominator. And um, maybe you can imagine with me for a moment, if you will, there is a very wide swath of opinions with what needs to be done, what should be done, how we can do it. There have been regulations that have been written on some of this stuff. Um, there's some ambiguity with those regulations, and I have been a part of as many of those meetings to try and figure out how we do things as I am physically and humanly able to be a part of. And uh, for the time being, this is the way we're doing things, and I appreciate your um, willingness to comply and help and think of your neighbor. Um, so welcome back. It's been a long time. Uh, I did services up in Palmer uh, before here this morning, and uh, obviously didn't have adult Bible class in between there, but uh, what was fun this last week was to show up in Palmer and see that all the pyramids were still purple for Lent. And um, we've been through a couple of colors since then, and we're now into the season of Pentecost. We've missed the whole season of Easter. Um, we've missed, um, you know, the beginning of Pentecost, uh, Ascension. We've missed a lot of stuff together here. And yet, we've had all of these things here for us. Um, thanks be to God due to the miracle of the technology that he's given us. So um, pleased that you're here. Pleased to welcome those of you that are with us on the, uh, on the video. And um, don't think for a moment that if people have chosen not to be here for whatever their reasons are, um, that's not for us to worry about. Um, that's when your mind has become occupied with um, someone else for what they are or are not doing, then you're not focused on yourself and your repentance really needs to be focused on yourself. And so uh, that's the reminder that we all have. Um, the service is going to look a little bit different. I'm not going to go to great lengths to explain it since we've already done the video, but hopefully you, you grabbed a service folder. These are the same things that we've been doing throughout the, the entire time that we've been meeting online, and this will be what's available with the service, which will not be now posted in time for Sunday mornings. Now we'll have to edit it after we're done here and then post it up, and it takes about 12 hours to go up, so those folks won't get the service until Monday at least. But uh, we'll follow through this worship folder. I'll invite you to take those with you when you depart from church um, after checking mailboxes and heading out the door. Uh, we'll talk about that after a bit. Um, it's going to look a little bit different with how we do things, and we struggled a little bit in Palmer this morning, so just a quick couple of um, procedures with how we'll do this. Uh, it's going to look a lot like we've been doing the videos, so I've got Brittany in the back. Um, thank, thanks to you and Suzanne both for all the work that they've done. The work continues for them. She's going to be singing um, our hymnody and our liturgical portions of the service. So if you see that it's in a hymn format, you don't have to sing, okay? Uh, that was the confusion in Palmer was everybody just goes automatic mode and starts singing when they hear their cue for it during the liturgy. But Brittany will be doing that. What I will invite you to do is to um, focus on and meditate on the words um, that are being sung because that's really the key in all of it anyway. Um, so for like I say, the hymnody portion and any of the liturgical singing portions, uh, Brittany will be doing that. Um, another quick thing, I will be taking my mask off when I'm doing the liturgy because I'm at the safe distance, um, physical distance, which begs another quick comment. One of the very influential um, scientists in all of this that I have followed closely from the very beginning, his name is Dr. Michael Osterholm. You can look him up. He was the former head of the CDC, and he's a researcher on global pandemics at uh, the University of Minnesota. And I do believe him to be a Lutheran, because he's from Minnesota, eh? But um, one of the things he wrote in an article that I just actually posted on my own personal Facebook page the other day that I thought was, was particularly impressive was he said, I don't want us to ever get used to social distance. He said, physical distance is fine. Social distance, no. We are made by God, and this is why I think he may be a Lutheran, partly because he's from Minnesota, but partly because of that comment. God made us to be in community and in connection. So if it's felt weird to be apart and away 
and it feels good, even though it's strange to be back in the way that we're being, you know, gathering together here, it's because God did make us to be together. And we want to be together. That's what people really want. Um, and more than that, God wants us to be together with him. And uh, I think that's a critical, important thing. And um, as we find out through the service today, God has been working overtime in the middle of all this to keep people together. So thank you for being here. And um, I think with that, we'll go ahead and get started. And uh, we welcome those who are joining us over the internet as well. And um, we will begin with our opening hymn with Brittany singing. Thank you. Please rise for worship. We make our beginning this morning in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways, to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake he forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our service continues with the words of today's intro. It's spoken responsively, whole verse by whole verse. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. Let the nations be glad and sing for joy, for you judge the peoples with equity and guide the nations upon earth. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. The earth has yielded its increase. God, our God, shall bless us. God shall bless us. Let all the ends of the earth fear him. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. In peace let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. 
Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty, eternal God, in the word of your apostles and prophets, you have proclaimed to us your saving will. Grant us faith to believe your promises that we may receive eternal salvation. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. be seated. The Old Testament reading appointed for this the second Sunday of Pentecost comes from Exodus the chapter Exodus chapter 19. I can't edit that out in post. The people of Israel set out from Rephidim and came into the wilderness of Sinai and they encamped in the wilderness. There Israel encamped before the mountain, while Moses went up to God. The Lord called to him out of the mountain, saying, Thus you shall say to the house of Jacob, and tell the people Israel, You yourselves have seen what I did to the Egyptians, and how I bore you on eagles' wings and brought you to myself. Now therefore, if you will indeed obey my voice and keep my covenant, you shall be my treasured possession among all peoples, for all the earth is mine." And you shall be to me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. These are the words that you shall speak to the people Israel. So Moses came and called the elders of the people and set before them all these words that the Lord had commanded him. All the people answered together and said, All that the Lord has spoken we will do. And Moses reported the words of the people to the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We speak responsively today's gradual Great is the Lord, and greatly to be praised, and his greatness is unsearchable. On your wondrous works I will meditate, and I will declare your greatness. Today's epistle comes from the book of Romans, chapter 5. For while we were still weak, at the right time Christ died for the ungodly. For one will scarcely die for a righteous person, though perhaps for a good person one would dare even to die. But God shows his love for us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Since, therefore, we have now been justified by his blood, much more shall we be saved by him from the wrath of God. For if, while we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of his Son, much more, now that we are reconciled, shall we be saved by his life. More than that, we also rejoice in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have now received reconciliation. Therefore, just as sin came into the world through one man, and death through sin, and so death spread to all men, because all sinned, for sin indeed was in the world before the law was given, but sin is not counted where there is no law. Yet death reigned from Adam to Moses, even over those whose sinning was not like the transgression of Adam, who was a type of the one who was to come. But the free gift is not like the trespass, for if many died through one man's trespass, much more have, grace, have the grace of God and the free gift by the grace of that one man, Jesus Christ, abounded for many. 
This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand for the singing of the Alleluia and verse. Now the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the ninth chapter. Jesus went throughout all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues and proclaiming the gospel of the kingdom and healing every disease and every affliction. When he saw the crowds, he had compassion for them because they were harassed and helpless like sheep without a shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, The harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore pray earnestly to the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. And he called to him his twelve disciples and gave them authority over unclean spirits to cast them out and to heal every disease and every affliction. The names of the twelve apostles are these. First, Simon, who is called Peter, and Andrew, his brother. James, the son of Zebedee, and John, his brother. Philip and Bartholomew, Thomas and Matthew the tax collector, James the son of Alphaeus and Thaddeus, Simon the Cananean, and Judas Iscariot who betrayed him. These twelve Jesus sent out instructing them, go nowhere among the Gentiles and enter no town of the Samaritans, but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel and proclaim as you go, saying, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Heal the sick, raise the dead, cleanse lepers, cast out demons. You received without paying, give without pay. Acquire no gold or silver nor copper for your belts, no bag for your journey, nor two tunics nor sandals, nor a staff, for the laborer deserves his food. In whatever town or village you enter, find out who is worthy in it and stay there until you depart. As you enter the house, greet it, and if the house is worthy, let your peace come upon it. But if it is not worthy, let your peace return to you. And if anyone will not receive you or listen to your words, shake off the dust from your feet when you leave that house or town. Truly I say to you, it will be more, it will be more bearable on the day of judgment for the land of Sodom and Gomorrah than for that town. Behold, I am sending you out as sheep in the midst of wolves, so be wise as serpents and innocent as doves. Beware of men, for they will deliver you over to courts and flog you in their synagogues. And you will be dragged before governors and kings for my sake to bear witness before them and the Gentiles. When they deliver you over, do not be anxious how you are to speak or what you are to say. For what you are to say will be given to you in that hour. For it is not you who speak, but the Spirit of your Father speaking through you. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated for our sermon hymn number 571. Grace, mercy, and peace be unto you all from God our Father and our risen Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. The text for today's sermon comes from the Old Testament lesson you heard read just a moment ago from Exodus 19. I'd like to give you some selected verses from that that I'll be focusing on. The Lord called to Moses from out of the mountain, saying, Thus you shall say to the house of Jacob and tell the people of Israel, You yourselves have seen what I did to the Egyptians and how I bore you out on eagles' wings and brought you to myself. 
Now, therefore, if you will indeed obey my voice and keep my covenant, you shall be my treasured possession among all peoples. So Moses came and called the elders of the people and set before them all these words that the Lord had commanded him. All the people gathered together and said, All that the Lord has spoken we will do. And Moses reported the words of the people to the Lord. Thus far our text. Well, here we are, right? A little bit of an echo here, minus the pew cushions to soak up a little sound, minus some people to soak up some of the sound, right? But we're back in church. At least we're, we're back in the building, right? That's a good thing. Church never ended. I'll be quick to remind folks, both who are with us in person as well as those who are joining us over the internet. And I should know because I was the one who had to scramble to keep it rolling when things changed sort of quickly back in March. And I know that while definitely not ideal, I do know this. The Word of God was still being proclaimed. Just like the Word that had been the command that had been given to Jesus' disciples to go and to preach the Word. I know that the Scriptures teach in Romans 10, 17, faith comes from hearing, hearing through the Word of Christ. And I also know that the body of Christ, that is the church with a capital C, is sola fides, which is Latin for only formed on account of faith, which, as we said, comes from hearing the Word, which, as we also said, was proclaimed throughout the duration of this time when we've been separated due to coronavirus. It's been proclaimed continuously, both when we've been gathered in this building and when people have been scattered to their own places. The truth of the matter is I can't really control what has happened outside of this building where that word was proclaimed. I can't control whether people prioritized the hearing of God's word during this hiatus from being in the building. I can't control whether people sought solace from God and his word in worship during the time we've been separated. And I can't even control whether people just tuned in for the sermon and then clicked back off or if they tuned in at all. All I could see was the statistical information contained and connected to the videos that we posted. And I can formulate some opinions on just how the services that we've posted and the resources that we have provided have been used during this time, and I can make some assumptions. But in the end, I had to give myself some comfort knowing that I couldn't control what happened, much like I couldn't control who chose to show up today or not show up today, which proves that, for that matter, I can't control anything of what happens now or then. It's tough for a pastor who's a control freak. You could have just as easily clicked out, even if you're very much present in the building. People can do that, too. And now that I can only see your eyes, I can't see if your lips are going while you're snoring. And yet here we are. We're in the building. What's changed? Well, duh, pastor, a lot has changed. Look around. Look around at what's changed. There are whole checklists of things that have to happen in order for us to be here. Some of them mandated by the state. Some of them just leveled upon you by that old hard knocker pastor who has to have it his way, the control freak. Remember that guy? There are whole measures and steps that we collectively as church are taking to ensure the safety and comfort of all kinds of people with different and wide-ranging views and opinions about what should or shouldn't be done, from mask-wearing or not mask-wearing by the pastor to not singing in worship, yet we've been really blessed, by the way, and I hope even from a physical distance you can express your deep gratitude for what we have been blessed with and you have been a part of even today in person with the musical offerings that we have received here. We've also been forced to withhold from human touch and to physically distance ourselves from one another. So what's changed? Lots has changed. And yet, nothing has changed. Not a dang thing. The Word is still being preached, guaranteed. People, 
Well, I suppose people can still decide if they want to hear it or not, just like whether they were in the building or out of the building. Worse yet, I suppose people will decide whether or not they want to abide by the word that's being proclaimed, guaranteed from this pulpit, which is really no different than when we were online at distance from one another in the end, isn't it? I think it's sort of strange and even a little bit fortuitous that today's reading from Exodus is today's reading. It's a reading that was long scheduled to happen before we even knew that today would be the first Sunday that we spent back in church together. Actually, the lectionary series has been centuries in the making and utilization. This reading was picked way before I was even born for this particular Sunday. But is it appropriate for today? You bet it is. By way of a short review, the Hebrew people, enslaved by the Egyptians and now led by Moses by the time of our reading, well, they've just lived through a flight from a place called Egypt. It was a flight from Egypt precipitated by ten plagues leveled against Egypt by God. Rivers of blood, frogs, Seth might like that actually, gnats and flies and dead livestock and boils and hail, locusts, darkness, and worst of them all, the death of the firstborn. On the heels of these deaths, I might remind you that Pharaoh sent the Israelites packing, but then in a quick and sudden change of heart, he sent his armies in pursuit of them. These unspeakable plagues that the people had witnessed were followed up by their pursuit to the shores of the Red Sea by the armies of Egypt, where, again, they were good as dead, and yet God rescued them by bringing them through the Red Sea on dry ground. And you can just picture Charlton Heston keeping the seas spread. Crossing safely over on dry ground, God's people Israel were then led into the wilderness by Moses where they complained bitterly about what had happened to them, God caring for them all the while through his servant Moses and his leadership and appointment of elders and leaders. We know there God provided for them bread from heaven, manna, and meat when they whined about not having meat, quail from heaven, standing at the entrances to their tents in the mornings, water coming forth from a rock when they were thirsty, And then we find ourselves caught up in the story to where we get to today's Old Testament reading, at the foot of Mount Sinai, where God calls out of the mountain to Moses, reminding them to hear and heed his voice, spoken through that servant Moses to the people, and how by following that voice they were saved, and yet they would also still yet be saved. It's after all of that history, collective history that we just reviewed, where we meet the words of today's reading. Moses enters into the mountain where God is, and there God reaffirms his covenant with Moses, which is meant to be shared with all the people. God says, you yourselves have seen what I did to the Egyptians, and boy, didn't they see it with their own eyes. How I bore you out as on eagle's wings, and I brought you to myself. Now, therefore, you will keep my covenant you shall be my treasured possession among all the peoples. To which all the people together responded in unison, all that the Lord has spoken we will do. Yeah, right. All the Lord has spoken we will do. I say that because I know that in the chapter that immediately follows today's Old Testament lesson, Yahweh gives his commandments through Moses himself, and in fact, Before we even get to this point, we realize that the people of Israel had begged Moses to speak on behalf of God for fear of this mighty and terrible holy God that frightened them whenever he spoke. Exodus 20, 19, you speak to us, Moses, and we will listen, but don't let God speak to us lest we die. They were literally clamoring to hear the word of God, but not from God directly, from Moses. Let Moses speak. So there Moses goes on the mountain and comes back to the people with instructions from Yahweh that resound, and we recall, even when we read today's reading, the events that happened before this, where God told them what to do and what not to do. 
God gave his Ten Commandments. Did they do what God instructed them? You guys should know. You've been in Sunday school before. If you've been in Sunday school, you know that before Moses even made it down the mountain, what had the people done? They had fashioned for themselves a golden calf. Oh, heck no, they didn't follow those commandments. All that the Lord has spoken we will do, they said, and then turned right back around and fashioned a golden calf. Maybe they should have said, all that the Lord has spoken we will do, insofar as it doesn't impinge on my personal rights or my space or whatever the heck I want to do. That's really more like what happened. It's more like what they really meant. Here we are, back in church. Back after, or should I say back during, our own plague of sorts. Back after all the trials that we have experienced during this time separated from one another, separated from church, separated from the things that we love to do, or I should say some so-called trials, I still prefer a little physical distance from other people to a river of blood or hordes of swarming gnats, frogs, flies, or locusts, although we've seen news of that during this time too, haven't we? We're back, even though the plague hasn't really ended, even though the plague remains ongoing. And not unlike the Israelites of old, we are still hearing the word of the Lord, aren't we? What does he say? Hasn't really changed. Now, therefore, if you will indeed obey my voice and keep my covenant, you shall be my treasured possession among all peoples. It's the same word. I'm proclaiming to you the same word that Moses proclaimed to you that came directly from God. It's our text for today. Isn't that why we gather or listen on the Internet as Christians so that we may be God's treasured possession? so that we may receive faith from hearing. We gather to hear His Word and to be His people and hopefully respond to that Word of the Lord with words from our own mouths that sound something like this, all that the Lord has spoken we will do. Isn't that the expected response? Yeah, right. All that the Lord has spoken we will do. When we were meeting on the YouTube channel, and only on the YouTube channel, all anybody wanted was to be back in church, here in the building. Why? So they could hear the word of the Lord. At least that's what I was told. Now that we're back in church, I still have to assume all anybody wants to know, all anybody wants to hear is the word of the Lord. Why? So that we can respond all that the Lord has spoken we will do? I hope so. But I have to tell you, the pessimist in me says, yeah, right. Yeah, right, because I've heard a lot of, I think this, I think that, with nary a thought of, what has the Lord spoken? What has the Lord spoken? What has the Lord spoken during this time? Same as in Moses' day. Same as in the day when God gave to Moses his Ten Commandments. You shall have no other gods before me. That's the same thing he said in Moses' day. He says it today. God the speaker, Moses' his mouthpiece. Today, God the speaker, Kevin McReynolds, his mouthpiece. You shall have no other gods before me. You shall not murder. You shall not bear false witness against your neighbor. You shall not covet. There's a handful of commandments that God has said through Moses to his people back in that day, through his disciples in their day, like in our gospel reading, and now through me to you in our day. They seem clear enough, these couple of commandments I've tossed out there just for fun. For any basically trained, simply catechized Lutheran, you should know that as we review each of these Ten Commandments from the what does this mean in Luther's small catechism, you murder somebody when you hurt or harm them in any way. Don't want to wear a mask in church? Have you thought about how might that affect your neighbor? 
Have you thought about your neighbor, or are you just concerned about yourself and how maybe ridiculous you might look, or how maybe uncomfortable it is, or what I realized about myself wearing a mask at the first service today, that I need a breath mint before I put it on, because I don't like coffee breath all that much. Maybe your mom gave you a half stick of Trident like my mom used to do. Have you thought about your neighbor, or are you just concerned about how this affects you? It's a fifth commandment problem. You don't like this person's thoughts about it or that person's thoughts about it or pastor's thoughts about it, how they're unwilling to be out in public or how they're fully out in public, uncovered, don't care about it. So you talk to somebody else about what he or she said, all the while not talking to the person themselves about why or how they feel. Well, folks, that's an Eighth Commandment problem, right? You shall not bear false witness. What should you be doing? you should be assuming the best about your neighbor. So it's an Eighth Commandment problem. You wish this church, St. Paul's Lutheran Church in Central City, or St. John's up in Palmer where I've done services already, you wish this church would do things more like that church or the other church so we see what all the others are doing and we compare this one to those? Well, this is the one I have a call to serve and to shepherd sheep without a shepherd. Sounds like what Jesus said in the gospel today. You wish your pastor's attitude was more like their pastor's attitude towards all this stuff, whether it be COVID or race or politics or polemics or anything like that? Well, that's a ninth commandment problem. You shall not covet. You got me. Sorry. Wishing you had something you already don't have is a ninth commandment issue. And at the heart of a few of these simple examples that I have experienced, heard, seen, and been around for the last several weeks and months is a first commandment issue. You shall have no other gods before me. Because in order to break any of the remaining nine commandments, you've already broken the first to decide that you know what's best. When you put your needs over the needs of your neighbor, you have a first commandment problem. When Jesus was quizzed on what's the greatest commandment, or quizzed a Pharisee, I should say, the Pharisee responded, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength, and love your neighbor as yourself. This is the fulfilling of the law. How have we done loving our neighbors in this time that is so strange for all of us? And could we say, people who have heard the word of God, all that the Lord has spoken, we will do. Yeah, right. I guess the more things change, the more they stay the same. Just like Solomon wrote in God's Word, Ecclesiastes 1.9. There is nothing new under the sun. There's truth in that in another way. There's nothing new under the sun. And thankfully, there's one thing that has not changed, that Christ died for the likes of sinners who have only themselves in mind, that Christ thought first about his neighbor, which is you and me, before thinking of himself, that Christ obeyed God's word to a T, Without exception, without question, he did everything that his father had sent him to do completely and perfectly, not being concerned about his own way. And it's still the same Christ, the one who has been, the one who is, and the one who will be preached from this pulpit, whether it's in person or over the Internet or however we have to do it faces covered, backs turned, I don't care. We'll get that word of Jesus preached, that Jesus had to die. Because when you look at the way things are, when you look at the way people are, you sort of start to think they deserve what they're getting. The sick and sad truth is that Jesus got what people deserve. And trust me when I tell you, he had a whole lot of checklists. If you think we got checklists in order to get into church, Jesus had a whole lot of checklists to check off before he could complete his work. And every one of you is on that list. He's checked you off. 
and he's covered you with his blood. All that the Lord has spoken regarding Jesus, Jesus has done. And in doing so, he made things right once again with God the Father so that you could be back, back again. And I'm not just talking about being back again in church. I'm talking about being back again with the Father on account of the Son. Back together again, not at a social distance or a physical distance or a separated distance over an internet landline or whatever you're using. You are back because of what Christ has accomplished for you. Thanks be to God that some things never change. Amen. And welcome back. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We stand as we join together and confess our common faith in the triune God using the words of the Apostles' Creed. We confess. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the holy Christian church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Today we pray for the whole church and for her witness of hope to the world that in every city, village, and home across the globe, the voice of the Lord would be heard by faithful preaching of the gospel and proclamation of God's word. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. We pray for those who labor in the fields of the Lord today and for the Lord to raise up laborers for his harvest fields that their work would be blessed and that they would be protected and defended against the enemies of his kingdom. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. We pray for our synod, for Matthew, our president, for this congregation, and for all pastors who serve. We pray for the resources to accomplish what the Lord has given to us to do despite all the obstacles and temptations that have been placed before us, so that united in the faith we would serve the Lord with joy. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. We pray for all of us who live under the flag of this nation, for those who govern in our country and for the causes of peace and justice and righteousness, so that we would all be given grace and freedom to serve the Lord honorably and in accord with his word. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. We pray for the poor and hungry, the homeless and unemployed and the oppressed, that the Lord would grant each of them mercy and that we would help to relieve their suffering and want with the means that have been made available to us. Let us pray to the Lord, Lord have mercy. We pray for the sick, that the Lord would grant each of them healing. For the wounded in spirit, that the Lord would make them whole. And for the grieving, that the Lord would comfort them, comfort them, especially those who have been affected by this ongoing pandemic and its effects. Hear our prayers on behalf of those we name before you in our hearts and minds. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. We pray for those who know the riches of the Lord's blessings, that they would cheerfully return to the Lord the tithes and offerings of a grateful heart, giving generously to the many agencies of the church who works to help those in need. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. We pray for the dying, that they would have peace at the last, and for our grateful remembrance of those who have died in Christ, that in the fullness of time the Lord would bring us with them into his everlasting presence, where sin and death will trouble us no more. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. O blessed Lord, through Moses you called a people to yourself, and from them you delivered up your own Son to be our Savior. By his sufferings and death he has redeemed sinners from our sins, and by his resurrection he has released us from the fear of death. Help us to live as your own people, mindful of all of your people, doing the good works for which we are created, and praying with confidence the petitions and supplications of our hearts. We ask these things through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. 
Amen. Please be seated during the time of our offertory. Again, we will not be collecting offerings by passing a plate. You're welcome to drop them off if you didn't already in the back here in the front when you're departing from church, and yet we will still listen to the words of today's offertory song. Thank you. I invite you to stand as we pray the prayer our Lord taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And now the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you his peace. Amen. Please be seated for our closing hymn. Welcome once again. Just a couple of uh, quick words as we depart today, a little instruction since this is our first time back. We'll be, um, we, we talked about this with the elders doing the ushering on the way out. I think we're big kids now and there's few, of, few enough of us, few enough of us? Um, there's few of us so that we can manage this ourselves on the way out, but uh, as we dismiss, we want to still maintain that uh, physical distancing from one another. A quick story, I uh, did a, a funeral here a couple, two, three weeks ago, and everybody stood at their physical distance at the funeral, and uh, I had to shout the whole service. There's still very many, uh, a number of regulations that still govern how a funeral is performed, so we couldn't have printed materials in hand. We couldn't meet in the chapel for a service beforehand. It was all done graveside, and I had to shout the whole service to everybody who was, you know, a thousand yards off. Well, immediately when the, immediately when the service ended, uh, what do you suppose happened with everybody? They all closed in on one another, hugs, condolences, handshakes, the whole nine yards. And I have to tell you that has been, for me personally, one of the struggles that I have had to reckon with in the middle of all this is if we are providing services in church here, are we providing the opportunity for people to come together and to break 
some of those distancing measures that they say have been effective in quelling the virus. Um, it struck me at that funeral, and I ended up talking to someone who I thought was um, Frida Pullen's sister, because she looked just like her, but it wasn't. It, was, uh, it happened to be Dan Pullen's former mother-in-law. Um, visited with her because she stayed at a distance, and I stayed at a bit of a distance from her, and she said, I'm just not ready for people to come up and be near me. And um, that's one of those things that you might feel very comfortable doing things differently than we're doing them here, but that's one of those things that we have to consider first before ourselves, and that's hopefully what you took away from the sermon is that's what Jesus did, that's what we're called to do. So don't assume anything. Um, it makes for awkward interactions with people. You know, I'm comfortable with this. Bring it on in here and give me a hug. Well, that's great. I might not be. They might not be. And don't ever assume we have to communicate more than ever in times like these. And that's how God made us. And so we use these times for, um, for a time of self-reflection. And um, as I have learned over these past several weeks in several different documents that I've read, even with regard to the you know, the race stuff that's going on, the place that we should begin in all this is with introspection and repentance, period. How might I do better is what we need to be looking at at this time. How might I do better being a child of God? How might I be, do better for my neighbor? And um, it's a time of great learning for all of us and difficulty, so... I appreciate the fact that you're here. I hope more people start to feel more comfortable that we have taken extra measures, even if it feels excessive, to make people feel safe in coming here. And if they don't, we don't want to think less of them for staying away and partaking over the internet because as I said in the sermon, the word is proclaimed and that's what matters. So thanks be to God that it can. Um, seems like I had another announcement, but I think I'm out of words for the day. Oh, I know what it was. This service, because we can't have it posted on Sunday mornings, we have to go down, I have to go down and edit it and get it posted up now. It won't be available until tomorrow. So if I said something that, uh, that uh, tripped a trigger with someone, um, you can tell people about it today and they'll find out tomorrow. <laughs> Anything I'm missing? Be sure if you have the chance to personally thank Brittany and Suzanne because they have been wonderful professional as all get out and have made this possible. So as we depart here, I'll ask that you just kind of keep an eye. We'll start kind of working from front to back. That's why we had to seat the way that we did. That does follow the regulations, which by the way, is a fourth commandment issue. For those of you who have been well catechized, we do have regulations that we have to follow as a church. Now you might see another church choosing not to follow some of them, and that's not our problem. I'm the one who has the call here to have to figure that out, and I have to give answer to God about how we're doing it. And this is the best way we figure to do it. So it is absolutely a fourth commandment issue. And um, so we'll continue to do these things until we find a way that we can relax some of them and we can see some light at the end of the tunnel. But I pray, and I hope you do too, that these measures are temporary ones. So as you dismiss, um, be sure to pick up your stuff in the mailboxes. There's some devotional booklets down there. You can use a little hand wash station down there. Take your bulletins with you, and um, if you exit out the south doors over there, um, I will uh, hope to see you again next week. Blessings be with you in the Lord. Amen. I'll stay up here, too, from a distance. See ya. <laughs>